whoa, that looks kind of creepy. But that's basically the cosmic web. Hello, wonderful person. Today we're going to discuss this really cool idea once again, because yet another study discovered something unusual about this very mysterious and somewhat difficult to detect phenomenon. This cosmic web, as you might already know, is essentially what the entire universe is more or less made out of. And even though for the most part its existence is known through computer simulations, its actual presence has also been detected by different telescopes by investigating certain regions of the universe. And even as far back as 2014, the scientists were already able to detect certain observations that represented something that was originally simulated on a computer which even back then suggested that the cosmic web is everywhere and it also creates a kind of a gas flow across the universe, across different galaxies. With one of the more impressive images that we've discussed a few years ago being this one right here, showing the cosmic web that stretches millions and millions of light years across. And here's another one showing us something slightly smaller but also quite as impressive. But more importantly, the recent study, and also some of these other studies of Cosmic Web, allow us to answer a really important and somewhat mysterious question. The question of how galaxies can grow so massive so quick. Because, for example, according to various computer simulations, when the scientists do create these miniature universes in a box, what they generally observe is a relatively slow growth of galaxies, but some galaxies do grow a little bit faster, especially if there is a lot of cosmic web connecting to those galaxies and a lot of gas flowing through them. And this has been simulated many, many times in some of the bigger projects, including what's known as the Illustrious Project, which allow us to see how the universe evolved and developed across billions of years. But the important question here is still kind of difficult to answer. Why is it that we still find these really early galaxies, like even the ones we've recently discovered only a few months ago, where the galaxy itself is way too massive to exist so early and produces way too much energy, as if it has a lot more mass than we initially anticipated or predicted in some of the models. And so there's a bit of a disconnect between what we expect to find in the early universe and what we actually discover there. And the discoveries are very often extremely massive galaxies with extremely massive, supermassive black holes in the middle. And it's usually extremely difficult to explain the existence of these galaxies. They're clearly out there, but how could they form so quickly and acquire so much mass? And so this recent study that, as always, you can find in the description below, was able to identify this very distant galaxy known as SMM J0913, a galaxy that seems to be growing extremely fast, creating new stars approximately a thousand times faster than the Milky Way galaxy, while at the same time also discovering several other quasars very close to this galaxy, which presented an excellent opportunity for scientists to try to figure out what happens in a neighborhood nearby. And mostly because what this allows the scientists to do now is take the light from the distant quasar and try to trace it as it passes through various types of gas on the way to Earth. And because these quasars in terms of the night skies are located very close to this galaxy, it allows the scientists to thus identify any kinds of gas or any kinds of motion very, very close to this particular galaxy. And in this case, they were able to discover once again the signs of this mysterious cosmic web and the signs of a lot of motion of gas headed toward the galaxy itself. Now, the starburst galaxy right here is about two and a half billion years old, and the quasars next to it are very likely a little bit older because they're actually slightly more distant. And so we're kind of looking at this from the perspective of galaxy being right here, the galactic cosmic streams being right here, and the background quasars here shining their light, and as it passes through one of the strings of the cosmic web, we then get to detect it here on planet Earth. And so this presented the scientists with an excellent opportunity to try to figure out what this cosmic web is doing to this galaxy, but also try to figure out what it's made out of, what's inside of it, and where it's actually going. And the first major discovery here was that the cosmic web did not contain any metals, any heavy elements. So basically it's made out of this primordial material, mostly hydrogen, helium, maybe a little bit of lithium. And since no other elements, like for example, no calcium, no aluminium, nothing else was discovered here, it really suggests that this material did not come from another galaxy. Typically, 
early galaxies will have a lot of supernova happening all over the place. And as these supernova happen, they're going to spew out a huge amount of material that's not going to be hydrogen, helium and lithium. They're going to produce a lot of heavier elements, which should be visible if this gas came from any galaxy that had a lot of supernova. But since the gas that the quasars were shining through did not have any of these materials, there is almost no doubt that it did not come from a galaxy. It was an intergalactic gas and they were also able to see that it was actually headed toward the galaxy itself. The gas here was definitely flowing toward the galaxy at a speed of about 300 kilometers per second, with the total rate of accretion of gas being about 100 masses of the sun per year. So basically this galaxy was absorbing about 100 masses of the sun through these galactic streams or through this tremendously large cosmic web. And because a lot of this gas is funneled toward the galaxy, this would definitely explain how this particular galaxy was able to grow so extremely quickly and how it was able to produce so many stars. Approximately 1200 masses of the sun per year. And that's actually one of the highest values of star production we've seen in any galaxy. Which of course also implies that a lot of these early galaxies, especially really massive, really bright galaxies, very likely grow in a similar manner. The more cosmic webs are connected to them and the more inward flow they experience, the more likely they're going to be growing much faster. Which essentially kind of presents the picture of the universe as this really intriguing, almost like spider-like web, with each individual intersection being a galaxy that gets fed by a lot of material that passes through those particular strings. And also according to the calculations here, a typical galaxy like this should really only need about 1 billion years to acquire enough mass to suddenly become a starburst galaxy with a lot of emissions all over the place. So basically some of these brightest galaxies very likely just experienced a lot of inflow through the very beautiful galactic web that you see on the screen. And what's even more impressive about the study itself is that this team here apparently looked at close to 70,000 different galaxies before they discovered this one. So this was an extremely lucky discovery. It took them about five years to identify this target and it was really the positioning of other quasars nearby that allowed them to study all of this in so much detail. But they only took at two quasars right now. So follow-up studies can actually investigate this area in more detail because this galaxy might actually become a kind of a Rosetta Stone for trying to understand how the cosmic web works and for trying to identify what happens in these early galaxies to help them evolve and become the way they are. Now this is obviously how Milky Way grew as well, but because we're located inside the galaxy, it is practically impossible for us to try to see this cosmic web from within. You really have to look at this from the outside. And so with every single study that comes out about this cosmic web, we kind of start getting better and better picture of how the early universe evolved and more importantly we're starting to really understand how absolutely crucial this cosmic web is for the development of structure of the universe, for the development of every galaxy in the universe and it also helps us understand that the galaxies themselves are really just the visible part of this really massive and humongous structure that stretches across the whole universe. And that's something that really makes you feel well, small in one sense, but also interconnected with everything out there. But once we learn more about the cosmic web or discover something else really cool about it, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.